Okay, hello everybody. My name is Sergey Baklikov and this is my regular Sunday night live broadcast live stream. Uh, for the last two months, since the 1st of March, uh, these live streams are now regular every Sunday night. And now during uh, coronavirus pandemic, I often making my live streams in another days too, but they are not regular. But you can always be sure the live streams uh, will be on a Saturday nights like it is now. Uh, at first, my live stream started as just questions and answers, but now trying to make it a little bit more interesting and also uh, making the news blocks. The news block uh, with the summary of all the main news in Russia for the week at least uh, in my subjective opinion. Uh, let me remind you, uh, for the last weeks in Russia, slowly, but with no stops, it's getting better and better here. All the restrictions step by step are getting lifted. Already now, all the companies which are not dealing with too many people, with uh, like too many customers, get back to work. 44 regions of Russia are already completely much all criteria for getting back to pre-coronavirus normal. Uh, for this reason, as I recently announced, I began to prepare for Russian trip 2020 on my channel. Same as last year, uh, this summer I will try to visit as more new for my channel places of Russia, um, as more as it will be possible. Thanks so much to all who recently contributed this trip. It's uh, pretty useful and will give more to the trip and to the videos. However, in the same time, I can say that definitely a uh, Russian trip this year is going to be the last uh, planned Russian trip on my channel. Uh, because, uh, however, it's absolutely obvious, most of my audience is not really interested in such uh, trips. Last year, the videos from uh, many different places of uh, the, my country never attracted too much of attention as well. And this year, I uh, don't see too much of interest too. You know, recently just 24 people recently contributed the trip. I say just 24 because it's 24 out of 140,000 subscribers or even like 10,000 of those who more or less are watching on a regular basis. So it's just 24, just 24 out of 140,000 subscribers. And uh, here I just have to explain that this is uh, absolutely not a complaint. Uh, contribution for a trip, as I told you, uh, was an absolutely voluntary thing. It's up to you. It's uh, absolutely not a problem if you're not in. But the thing is just it shows the real interest of the majority of my audience. Uh, I already got, got it that most of people, it's uh, no need to uh, high quality production in any in trips. You know, the stupidest videos of me going to the store to buy some beer, catching more interest than the videos which, in my opinion, really make sense and reflect, really reflects a rich and old Russian culture and history. Uh, but nobody needs Rachmaninoff, Shostakovich and stuff like that. So in this situation, I see it yet makes sense to keep putting much energy, time and efforts into producing what I consider as a high quality content. But it's probably not worth just, uh, you know, investing a lot of, you know, additional time for uh, big travels, big trips. It's time to be sincere with myself and to admit this kind of travel content is awesome, awesome, awesome for me, but not that really popular around the majority of the audience. Uh, I never receive as much of a return uh, of uh, power on my efforts with this content. Um, uh, I used to think that I just need to give it a time, but you know, the time goes already for many years and nothing changed about this. So it's already absolutely clear trend. 
So this Russian trip 2020 will be the last and I will keep making this due to the respect to my audience and uh, those who especially supported this trip. Uh, I will do my best this summer, but then uh, I'm really sorry, but uh, we'll have to stop it. Then I will keep making just uh, my regular uh, local videos and uh, we will see how it will go. Uh, well, not gonna close the channel for now, but you know, the thing is, my channel is a super niche and uh, this niche is too narrow for me uh, sometimes seems like to keep developing the channel. You know, if the horse is dead, just get off her. Uh, the thing is, like being a big professional with an awesome skills in video production, it makes no sense for me to get sticked for a small niche and uh, uh, killing the time, but for now, I, I still think that you have to keep making this. Uh, however, uh, keep working until at least September, and uh, uh, so no worries. And now, let's start the news after this retreat. After this retreat, uh, let's uh, get to the news block. The summary of uh, the main Russian news for a week in my personal uh, subjective opinion. No fake, no bullshit. <clears throat> okay, and uh, I know we all are so fed up with coronavirus, but these days we can do nothing with this. And many of the news are dedicated to coronavirus, unfortunately. So traditionally for these coronavirus days, let's start with uh, statistics of coronavirus as in Russia, as in the uh, whole world. Now you can see this scene. Uh, this week, the amount of coronavirus cases in the world reached over 5 million cases. To be exact, 5.4 million cases in the world, 345,000 people died. The leader is still the United States with almost 1.7 million cases and almost 99,000 deaths. But from the second place in this bad rating recently, Russia was replaced with Brazil. World Health Organization now uh, said that Latin America is a new focus of coronavirus infection in the world. 345,000 uh, cases in Russia and already 350,000 uh, cases in Brazil. But officially, the death rate in Brazil is six times higher than in Russia. Having almost the same number of cases in Russia, it's uh, 3.5 thousand deaths. In Brazil, there is 22,000 deaths. Uh, nothing changed regarding the shares of infection by regions of Russia. An absolute leader is uh, Moscow and Moscow region, then goes uh, St. Petersburg and all the rest. Uh, next thing. Uh, in the same time, it's uh, really uh, very curious and contradictory that yesterday China officially reported not a single new case of COVID-19 in their country. So in China, uh, from where the pandemic started, there is now not a single case of uh, infection, not a single new death. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty neutral to different conspiracy theories regarding coronavirus, but damn, this is definitely uh, the fact now just which gives uh, so much of thinking ground. Yeah, really. Italy. Uh, meanwhile, in Italy, since Monday, this week, they cancelled most of restrictions. You know, shops, malls and eateries get back to work, uh, pizzerias. Uh, in cathedrals, they began the ceremonies again. Of course, the mask uh, and uh, gloves regime is, however, is staying there. Uh, 
And you know, the prices for stuff, they're growing up. Let's say espresso from 1.3 euro growing up to two euro. It's uh, in Milan. In hair saloons, the car haircuts growing up from 20 to 25 euro. And many Italians are already reported uh, their complaints to the customer care organization of Italy. Uh, seems now that uh, what is happening uh, that uh, the business will try to compensate uh, lost profit during quarantine days through the higher price, higher price now after quarantine, you know. Uh, Mikhail Mishustin. So three weeks ago, I told you, Mikhail Mishustin, the prime minister of Russia, got coronavirus infection and hospitalized. Uh, there immediately was many rumors about that and that uh, we might well never see Mishustin to get back to his premier post again. But everything seems turned to be just way easier, just as it is. He's got coronavirus, he temporarily left his job, he recovered and now he's got back to work again. Putin, the president of Russia, with his decree already returned him the responsibilities and the power of a prime minister and vice versa, removed from the guy Andrei Belousov, who uh, temporarily replaced him. Uh, Ramzan Kadyrov, Ramzan Kadyrov, uh, in the same time, uh, this week recently uh, got infected with uh, COVID-19, the head of Chechen Republic of Russia, Ramzan Kadyrov, you can see him now on your screens. Uh, he got to the hospital, but uh, he seems going through infection in an easy, light form. Uh, he's feeling well and uh, keep controlling the work of uh, Chechen governments. Also today he performed with a video announcement uh, to the people of uh, the Republic with a message dedicated to one of the most significant for Muslims holiday called uh, Eid al fetr uh, Here let me tell you that just Chechen Republic is mostly a Muslim population, so that's why this holiday is important for them. Eid al fitr Uh, now coronavirus speak. Okay, uh, Russian virusologist Anatoly Alstein announced that Russia now went through the peak of pandemic. Starting from the 2nd of May, the amount of new cases uh, a day was staying in the same number. Uh, then a week ago, it started to drop down. Uh, so Russia got to uh, you know what is called plateau peak is went through. But the vice prime minister of Russia, Tatyana Golikova, in the same time reported to Vladimir Putin that uh, in the same time May will show up a bigger amount of death this month. It will happen because of uh, just a natural time delay between the beginning of infection and death. Uh, which in most of cases takes up to three, four weeks from the beginning of infection. Uh, by the words of doctors, uh, so people are sick uh, for three, four weeks. Uh, you know, ALV machines, artificial kidneys, uh, modern medicine supplies, uh, uh, it, it all lets to support the life of patients until the end. This way they recover many patients uh, but not all of them, unfortunately. Uh, many Russian hospitals are now filled in for only 30%, but in the same time, in uh, uh, restitution rooms, uh, there's many people who fight for life being infected three, four weeks ago, and uh, not all will survive. So that's why now the death statistics will come. Uh, in a moment when, like, yeah, we're already uh, coming to plateau. Uh, but today, however, the Russian government said that already 44 out of 85 regions of Russia are meeting absolutely all requirements for a complete removal of coronavirus pandemic restrictions inside of these regions. Russia never went through any of uh, possible so-called scary scenarios. The amount of new cases goes down every day. Uh, there's also no overloads in a 
uh, hospitals of Russia, which is pretty good. Um, Sergei Sabianin. Uh, Sergei Sabianin, he is uh, the mayor of Moscow, uh, this week signed a decree which has uh, became the beginning of uh, like step-by-step -step exit of uh, pandemic restrictions. Since tomorrow uh, we'll get back to work uh, the multifunctional centers in Moscow. It's uh, a centers of government services which works by the principle of only one window. Of most of government services in one window. It's, uh, by the way, a very great thing. It works since 2005 and uh, made it so that people no need anymore to go to a, a different certain government departments in order to get just the one or several but certain uh, services. Uh, it's just very comfortable and back in 2005, you know, it was the first places which started to use an electronic use where you just uh, coming, you're just getting a tickets and waiting for when you will be invited by the loudspeakers or through the message on the monitor. Uh, also, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll get back to work a car sharing companies like Yandex Drive. Uh, they were temporary stops during pandemic, but now it's getting it's getting back to life. So uh, Sergei Sabianin, the mayor of Moscow, he said that since tomorrow uh, they will get back to work in Moscow. Uh, but but it will be possible to rent a uh, car sharing a sharing car for no less uh, than five days. Uh, so car sharing, which is actually supposed uh, uh, to be uh, the service for mostly a very short term rentals, for now will start working only as a long time, five days minimum car rental. It is made in order to exclude the rotation of uh, too many people in uh, one car over and over again. In the same time, here in St. Petersburg, it is still staying forbidden until May 31st. I think uh, they might just want just to let it go in a normal way since the 1st of June without such, a, you know, half measures, I would say. Uh, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, this week said that uh, he consider a low rate of coronavirus death in Russia in many ways happens uh, thankful to the Soviet healthcare system. He said that USSR collapsed, but the healthcare created there in USSR is not. Soviet healthcare system created a real effective system of sanitary and epidemiologic, uh, epidemiologic control and care, which Russia just saved no matter to the collapse of the political system. So there was a mess in the political stuff, but uh, in the hospitals everything stayed the same. Uh, in the Council of uh, Federation of Russia this week, they offered to consider to give a legal definition to a term of self-isolation and to add it to the constitutional law of Russia. Uh, they want to set the rules of the game for self-isolation. Uh, because now, uh, from the point of view of the law, self-isolation is just a joke, it's nothing. Meanwhile, recently many things in Russia uh, during this pandemic uh, requires the self-isolation. Uh, there also was uh, the fines for people uh, who interrupted a self-isolation regime, uh, which uh, many people just easily were cancelling through the courts because there is, uh, there is no any legal definition and the rules regarding what is self-isolation it's all at all uh, it's nothing from the point of view of the law so this week they offered to add it to the law and uh, most probably uh, they will accept it as uh, now it's uh, definitely they want uh, they want to close this a huge obviously huge legal hole in the law 
the definition which is just not exist and don't have the rules so they probably will get it in order absolutely weird news came this week from the city of uh, Nizhny Novgorod uh, there a former deputy of uh, local city Duma was arrested after an attempt to sell an outdated artificial lung ventilation machines to the hospitals of Russia uh, those uh, were ALV machines produced yet in 1990s. They were expired in the uh, uh, storages and never had a permission for usage. Uh, he purchased these ALV machines for about like 70 bucks, uh, if talking dollars for each, but tried to sell it for $10,000 each. 143 times more expensive. Fortunately, it seems like uh, any doctor of uh, one of those hospitals uh, where he was trying to make this bullshit, to sell this bullshit, reported him to the police and uh, they arrested him during the sting operation when he and his partner uh, were unloading the machines uh, uh, on the territory of one of the hospitals. Unfortunately, this move from Nizhny Novgorod is not the only shithead who tried to take an advantage on the coronavirus situation. This week, also, the volunteer from Voronezh, the city of Voronezh, managed the sale of groceries from the humanitarian sets for socially disadvantaged people during coronavirus pandemic. Uh, like the ones I used to show you about, say, like a month ago during my uh, ride to such a socially disadvantaged people or just an old people with a volunteers of Ufa. You know, cheese, sausages, uh, sugar, waffles, and uh, cookies from those sets she tried to sell through Avita sites. It's the most popular ad site in Russia. Even uh, those after you know exposure she got it all back uh, this case is now given to the police for consideration of what to do with her after this uh, while while some mofos are trying the sound is okay okay while some mofos are trying to take an advantage on coronavirus selling outdated ALV machines the United States supplies 200 ALV machines to Russia for free this week now you can see this uh, on your screens uh, from the military base in Charleston North Carolina state the transport aircrafts delivers ALV machines to Moscow airports of Vnukovo, probably not all of them yet, but a big part of it. So this is definitely very much appreciated. Uh, thanks from me, like from Russian to uh, the United States government. <coughs> Next thing, uh, the news, the news case, which was pretty popular this week, uh, it uh, became one of the most viral news in Russia. Uh, it's all about this photo shot of a nurse in the hospital of the city of Tula. She's got her see-through anti-coronavirus costume above just a uh, body and a bra and underwear and bikini. This photo uh, somebody uploaded to social networks. It went viral big time, uh, managed a lot of discussions online and uh, sure finally got to the administration of this hospital in Tula. However, everything finished okay for this girl. Uh, she was uh, uh, disciplined, but uh, just got a warning. Because even though here is actually nothing too bad, nothing too bad in it, more than that, look at that uh, granny, you know, he's definitely enjoying this. However, there's absolutely certain requirements um, of, to the medical clothes of nurses. So um, the nurse herself said that um, it, she uh, decided to wear just a bra and underwear because it's so hot to be in this costume for all the day long. 
and she was not thinking that it is so see-through. And uh, you know, she's already got a lot of fans online who organized uh, flash mob. Uh, people were photographed in uh, costumes like this, and they were uh, telling like, try to do the same and uh, see how it is, how it is to walk like this uh, in a costume like this all the day long. Okay, this week a curious report from Forbes with the links to an information from the companies which are making the personal private bunkers. They said that rich Russians now began massively to buy off the um, private shelters, the bunkers. Uh, the price of such a bunker starts from $150,000. Recently, an ask for such a bunkers growing up 2,000%, but not only from Russians, but just at all. So it's like 20 times more than last year. And uh, you know, most of orders to Russia now goes to uh, elite uh, villages of Moscow region like uh, Rublevka, Nova Riga, Yaroslavka, Dmitrovka, and uh, also a part of them goes to St. Petersburg, but not to me, uh, because I'm not an oligarch for sure. Uh, Bloomberg, Bloomberg agency this week forecasted an absolutely record collapse of uh, Russian economy because of coronavirus pandemic. The calculations of uh, Bloomberg agency based on data from uh, Russian Ministry of Finances and it tells that fall of GDP of Russia uh, from April to June of this year will reach about 16%. This way, the fall of GDP can go deeper than after the world financial crisis of 2008 and it's going to be the worst since the beginning of 1990s. If so, if so, it's going to be uh, not good at all. I can say this for sure as the boy who lived in 1990s. It definitely was the worst time in all of the modern history of Russia, in modern history of Russia. But curious, those uh, days, the president of Russia, uh, Boris Yeltsin, Boris Yeltsin, same as uh, just Russia, as a country in general was considered as good, good. Так, Black April, okay. This week, many news in Russia was dedicated to uh, the uh, analyze of Russian car industry by the results of an April. Uh, and there is a huge collapse, and it's not Bloomberg saying, it's already Russian specialists. The sales of regular cars dropped down to 80%, and the premium cars also dropped to 60%. And uh, more than that, the production of cars in Russia also dropped down uh, 80%. And this April, in a car industry of Russia, they already called like a black, uh, black April. So um, that's why, since tomorrow in Moscow region, they also will start working uh, car dealerships. Yeah, car dealerships and uh, the offices of uh, sales of uh, real estate. Yeah, come on, you know, 80% fall is definitely a collapse. So get back to work, dudes. I completely, completely support this. Okay, school season. Uh, almost all schools of Russia this week finished an educational year, 2019-2020. All the pupils got their final marks for a year and uh, got to the summer vacation. Also, uh, this week, the Ministry of Education of Russia announced that for now, it seems the beginning of the next school year will be traditionally started at the 1st of September. Um, if uh, it will be so that uh, the pandemic uh, will keep dying in Russia. So there they uh, really hope for a uh, better scenario of uh, pandemic development. Um, the Ministry of Education of Russia announced that tomorrow, Monday, in Russia at 10 a.m. Uh, Moscow time, all the school boys and girls who released uh, from uh, Russian schools uh, this year can participate in a school prom party online. Uh, this year, because of a frigging pandemic, the real normal prom parties, which in Russia we call the last bell, 
will go online. And this is a very, very bad, I can say, one of the most significant events in the life of people actually screwed up today. This online last bell is nothing but just a desperate attempt to make at least something. But I can say as the person who had a normal last bell and who knows that this is one of the funniest and awesome uh, events which happens uh, in the life of Russians and uh, which uh, people remember for all of their life. I can say that this year uh, the Chinese virus has definitely stole it, stole it from people, from uh, schoolboys and schoolgirls. Okay, uh, also the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, said that because of this COVID-19 pandemic, this year a young man who released from schools will not be called uh, to the military draft. Normally, it had uh, to be started at the 15th of June. <clears throat> uh, it is already agreed with the Ministry of uh, Defense of Russia. And here, let me explain that normally it was like this. Look, the boys who finish school and uh, is already in age of 18, uh, <clears throat> they uh, have a right to try to pass an exam uh, to university or college. If they are going through exam and they are getting to university or college, so they keep studying and they may not go to the army until that. The draft is getting postponed. But if they are not going through an exam, so, whoa, whoa in the army, now, теперь ты в армии. So now Putin cancelled the draft for them no matter what. Even if the if, if the, for those guys who will not go through the exams to the universities. Um, in Crimea this week was uh, cancelled uh, the decree about self-isolation regime uh, and uh, you know, it became allowed to work again for most of enterprises, allowed the walks outside for people. But, uh, you know, the work of tour industry is still blocked, which is no good because a pretty touristic region like uh, Crimea, so definitely there's a lot of job places in a tour industry and uh, people can't work. Sochi, Sochi, the host of Winter Olympic Games 2014 and the most touristy vacation city of Russia is planning to open 65 sanatoriums with their beaches on the shore of Black Sea since the 1st of May. And uh, this is an announcement of the heads of vacation and tourist department of Sochi, but it means nothing. After all, it will depend on... Uh, uh, what the Russian government will say. So they are ready, but after all, they will see if the government will allow them. You know, actually now many things in Russia, they refer to the 1st of June, because uh, many things, uh, for many things, the deadline is at the 1st of June, and there they will have to say. So they uh, extend the restrictions or just finally let it go, finally everything getting back to normal. Uh, you know, in certain regions of Russia, tour industry uh, will begin step by step uh, recovering now. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, it will happening since the 1st of June. Uh, you know, and at first, the government gonna allow the uh, sanatoriums with a medical license, and then, only then, uh, more traditional hotels. Many Russians follow for the situation uh, about an opening of the international borders and uh, uh, renewal, like restarts of vacation season, but nothing is still unknown for sure. So many Russians now just stopped following for it and just began to book the tours inside of Russia. They began to book uh, the hotels and tour bases. Uh, the most popular destinations traditionally became Krasnodar region, that's where is the Sochi, and Crimea. So the towns of Sochi, Anapa, Yalta, Yupaturia, Alushta, Feodosia, Sebastopol, 
Sudak and uh, Alupka. All these places used to be uh, popular and in a uh, pre-coronavirus times, but now just even more people uh, will want to come there because even those, uh, uh, even those who uh, prefers uh, to have a vacation outside of Russia now. Uh, will have nothing more to do than to correct their priorities and just to come for vacation at least to Russia. Also, you know, uh, this week the Federal Service for Surveillance on Consumer Rights Protection and Human Wellbeing came up with a um, kind of contradictory recommendation for an airline companies of Russia to sell no more than 50% of seats in the airplanes. It's like a measure against COVID-19. And Aviation Union of Russia immediately said that they are absolutely against it. And uh, it was supported with the Ministry of Transportation of Russia. Uh, by the wor their words, you know, this measure seems barely effective. effective. In the same time, uh, it definitely will lead to a significant race of uh, ticket prices and airline companies will be forced to compensate those unsold tickets that lost profit for um, an account of uh, passengers, of another passengers. And fortunately, this story end up quick enough because after all, uh, this recommendation was refused, which is pretty good for customers and uh, for me who I uh, still plan to explore the new places of Russia this summer. It's it's good actually. Who? Uh, the uh, president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, uh, also today, just today, signed uh, the law for remote voting and it now gives the possibility to vote on a distance electronically or by postmail to vote on all levels of Russian elections. It is now uh, one of the main themes for opposition of Russia. Uh, they are against it, you know, opposition of Russia, mostly so-called liberals, as they are thinking it gives the authorities a wider ground for manipulations, for juggling and uh, cheat on votes. In the same time, I know that uh, in uh, other countries, many other countries, the remote voting exists already for a long time. So uh, let me know how it goes uh, in your countries, if it goes, and what do you think about it? Um, also, this week, Vice Prime Minister of Russia, Yuri Borisov, announced that Suhoi, Suhoi Su-57, it's a Russian single-seat uh, twin-engine, multi-role, uh, fifth-generation jet fighter, went through all tests, test flights, and uh, confirms all technical and tactical requirements. Uh, the government contract to supply 76 of Su-57 jet fighters for an air and space force of Russia goes according to the schedule. The first party of Su-57 will be supplied uh, this year no matter uh, to the force majeure uh, situation with coronavirus. And now it's going to be an awesome news from Yaroslav, I'll check the video. Uh, you know, one of the most popular jokes about Russia is about the bears. The bears who are walking in the streets of Russia. It's actually sometimes real annoying because it's so frequent, but in the same time, mostly, yes, it's just a joke. But this week, in a good old, I would say, an ancient city of Yaroslavl, uh, that joke became real, right in the historical uh, city center of Yaroslavl, the bear uh, who came out of the forest, he attacked the random guy he just met on his way. And we can see this case on a video. Fortunately, the bear hadn't enough of time to kill that guy, because taxi drivers who were staying around 
scared him off with just, you know, they just started to horn and all this stuff. Uh, however, the man got an injury of his leg, medics, you know, sued up uh, his laceration and uh, sent for a treatment. I saw another video. You know, the specialist was uh, watching for the behavior of the bear for the next 15 hours and uh, they hoped that uh, the bear will get back to forest, but it never happens. He was keep staying in the city, so uh, his behavior, they are appreciated as uh, inadequate and dangerous, Say, uh, so they had to shut him off in order not to endanger another citizens. Uh, and, uh, you know, they said that it is not related somehow to coronavirus pandemic because actually they register such a cases uh, every time it springs. Also, you know, this week, just yesterday, to be exact, yesterday, there was a bank attack uh, right in the center of Moscow, you know, 35 years old guy. Uh, get to the bank and uh, threatened to explode the bank and uh, kept four its workers and one client in a hole. Uh, it was the man in the uniform of uh, Delivery Club, one of the most uh, popular food delivery services in Russia, along with uh, Yandex Food, you know, such uh, green costumes. So he uh, uh, got to the bank and uh, demanded for a large amount of money. Later, it became known that he held just a fake bomb in his hands uh, and he was screwed up uh, with the police assault. Nobody died or injured. After arrest in his back, the police uh, found just two packs of doshirak. This is such a Chinese fast to cook noodle and uh, just a small jackknife. It's obvious that uh, this uh, bank attack was absolutely not professional it's uh, definitely not what he prepared for like a long time seems like he was just uh, driven by the problems in his life uh, based on a depressive psychological condition and uh, i believe a fucking coronavirus too um, it is also became known that uh, he had and has a bank debt in amount of almost 2 million rubles, which is about $28,000, uh, which is definitely a very big amount of money for just a Russian uh, food delivery courier. And uh, here I just wish that the courts will take it all in consideration, will not break the life for this guy and just will give him uh, just a conditional term so he will not sit in a uh, in a prison also this week happens a whole set of ridiculous things uh, with the kids uh, and these are the stories with no happy ends at first uh, we've got a news from uh, Chilabinsk region there 12 years old schoolboy together with his friends he played in um, asphyxi as fixation, you know, uh, some kind of stupid game they are invented. Uh, they got a tow rope, connected it to the metallic construction and somehow were as fixing themselves, their neck. And in one moment, the rope tightened as much as not him, not his friends were not able to weaken it or just uh, never got enough of time for this, so he died. Next day after that, from Moscow region, we've got another news. 16 years old boy uh, there in Moscow region stole the keys from parents' car while they slept and got for a ride. And here I need to say that driver's license in Russia you can get only since 18 years old. So that 16 years old guy had no any experience, maybe besides his father was uh, giving him to drive a little bit somewhere in the countryside, far from the roads. So when he himself just alone got to the roads, he of course like pretty quick uh, lost the control and got out of the roads into the ditch. And uh, he got injurious and uh, from these injuries he died. And uh, yesterday 
uh, there was the news from the city of Ufa, my hometown, four teens there, they gone, uh, minibus, so-called route taxi. So they gone this route taxi and was riding until they hit the track, you know, they hit the track and after this just run away, run away from there. But somehow the police already determined uh, one one uh, one guy there, 15 years old, teen, and uh, now it's just a question of time uh, to find him and to find his friends. And uh, because of an age, they will not go into the um, uh, courts. Uh, but but definitely, uh, there's going to be a fine for their parents who will have to compensate as uh, minibus uh, injuries as. Uh, uh, that track. Well, here I just have to say that, yeah, we have to uh, watch for our kids more and uh, to talk with them more about what is bad and what is not. Also, this week, you know, a famous music producer, Andrei Prigozhin, and uh, a husband of popular uh, singer in Russia, Valeria, he said that unfortunately, an artist, the musicians, especially young ones, are now going through a uh, hard times. Uh, well, even top 10 of uh, Russian pop stars is suffering now. Now they are eating up what they saved up in a normal pre-coronavirus days. Um, also in this same situation, uh, the artists of a circus in Russia, and uh, this situation is unfortunately not gonna change soon by his words. Uh, yes, you know, in this uh, condition, when now almost nobody buys CDs or uh, vinyls or even MP3s, maybe just uh, of uh, top artists, well, we all can buy the vinyl of the Beatles or Rolling Stones, especially if it's a new album of, let's say, Rolling Stones or Paul McCartney, but come on, we are not gonna buy an uh, MP3s uh, much or series of uh, just a newbie artists. Uh, now, the main revenue of all artists all over the world, it's mostly the live concerts, but now there is no live concerts. Well, now everybody like giving a lot of online concerts, but uh, they are free. Well, maybe some have a crowdfunding, and I hope that really, really they, their fans helps. Well, uh, seems like the uh, pandemic crisis beats even professional high-paid high uh, sportsmen because recently was sold the gold medal of the final. It's somebody from Team France uh, who won the World Cup Championship 2018 in Russia. So this unknown French uh, footballer sold it for 66,000 euro. But it's probably Benjamin Pavar or Samuel Umtiti or Rafael Varan, Luca Hernandez, Paul Pogba, Ngola Kante, Bless Mutiudi, Antoine Griezmann, Kylian Mbappé or Olivier Giroud. Somebody of them. <laughs> yeah. So it was sold for just 66,000 euros, which is about like almost $72,000 and look probably the guy really got a problem because you know like yeah big money big problems because look uh, this is the highest reward for a football player for a professional football player there can be nothing more than World Cup you know and uh, they are going th to this through the whole of their life and they got it. And you know, finally it was sold for just just $72,000. I say just because, you know, for these uh, European football players, uh, it's like almost nothing. It's almost nothing. And now uh, he had to sell it, you know. The biggest reward for a, uh, you know, football player. So there's no other reason than just, you know, the problem with the money, you know. Uh, now let me remind you that uh, football uh, only restarted in Germany and Germany Bundesliga and uh, here in Russia it will be uh, uh, launched again at the 21st, 21st of uh, June. At first it will be without the viewers and stuff. 
Okay, so next thing. This week also, you know, YouTube terminated uh, the YouTube channel of uh, Crimea 24 TV channel. It has happened without any warnings and uh, as they say, after three years of uh, successful partnership. Uh, channel is terminated due to violation of terms of service. Uh, they tried to get a more detailed comments, uh, but there is still no response from YouTube. Uh, you know, it caused a huge bad hurts uh, from the deputies of Crimea who said it's anti-democratic, that Western democracy and freedom of speech is just a fiction because look, they are shutting our mouth up. Uh, you know. Uh, when I told you about this uh, case uh, earlier this week in my daily news blog, I said that they don't have to hurry up with the conclusions because, you know, a year ago I also got my channel terminated without any warning and uh, I sent a message to YouTube supports and my channel was unblocked in about 8 hours because it was obvious it's a mistake. Uh, the thing is, uh, in most cases, it's a at first a robotic algorithms block the channels, and often they may go wrong or sometimes. And so after this, they are making the manual check, and if everything is okay, they recover the channel. My channel was recovered in only like uh, eight hours, and I remember it was funny. It was like maybe one or two days after I received physically received. Uh, my silver YouTube play button. But now, now, you know, some days uh, later, I see that uh, no, it wasn't a mistake, it's a real ban because still now the channel is terminated. Well, of course, if uh, maybe YouTube uh, workers, uh, the support managers, are not in a coronavirus quarantine, lockdown, and just stay home. So we will see. Well, anyway, anyway. Well, and uh, it seems that these are all news that I suppose that going to be interesting for the summary block of uh, the weekly news. Hope you enjoy it. And Dave, I need to drink water. Oh, damn. Dave.